Next, we'll be reviewing data. Discrete data comes in whole numbers. An example of this is people. You can't have half a person. You can just have one person. Next, continuous data comes in decimals and allows for infinite number of possibilities. In the realm of data analysis, we encounter various types of data, each offering unique insights into our research. First, we have discrete data, which encompasses two subcategories, nominal data and ordinal data. No nominal data represents categorical information without any inherent order, such as colors or types of animals. In contrast, ordinal data introduces a ranking or order to the categories, making it suitable for situations like a pain scale, where the order of the pain of severity matters. Moving on to continuous data, we find two primary categories, interval data and ratio data. Interval data is measurable data with equal intervals between values, but it lacks an absolute zero. An excellent example of this is weather temperature, where the difference between 20 Celsius and 30 Celsius is the same between 30 Celsius and 40 Celsius, but zero Celsius does not represent the absence of temperature. Finally, we have ratio data, a subset of interval data that features an absolute zero point, meaning a value of zero indicates the complete absence of the quantity being measured. An illustrative instance is weight. If something has a weight of zero kilograms or pounds, it means there is nothing there. This distinction in data types are crucial in selecting appropriate statistical methods for analysis and gaining meaningful insights for our research. Statistical tests. This is very important because on the NAPLEX exam, they could give you a study and they could ask you which test should be used for this study. Selecting the appropriate statistical test for a research study hinges on several key factors. First and foremost is the type of data being analyzed, which can be categorized as continuous, nominal, or ordinal. Continuous data, such as height or temperature, often calls for parametric tests like t-test or ANOVA. Nominal data, representing categories without inherent orders, such as colors, typically require non-parametric tests like the chi-square test. Ordinal data, which includes ranked categories, such as the pain scales, often involve non-parametric tests as well. Another vital consideration is the number of groups being compared. If there are more than two groups, analysis of variance, ANOVA, or its non-parametric counterpart, the Kruskal-Wallis test, may be appropriate. On the other hand, when dealing with only two groups, T-test or Mann-Whitney U-test are commonly employed. Lastly, the independence or pairing of groups plays a crucial role in test selection. Independent groups are those in which observations in one group are not related to observations in another. An example of this is comparing the test scores of two different classes. Paired groups involve related observations, like before and after measurements, in the same individuals. So now we'll be seeing which type of test to use when. And on an exam or on the NAPLEX, you could be presented with a case in which you would first determine what type of data is being used. Then you would see how many groups there are, along with if they're independent or paired. And then you would pick the test based on those factors. So starting off with continuous data, if you have two independent groups, you would use a student's t-test, two paired groups, a paired t-test, three or more independent groups, ANOVA, and three or more paired groups, you would use an ANOVA. For nominal data, if you have two independent groups, you would use a chi-square, two paired groups, McNamer, three or more independent groups, chi-square, three or more paired groups, Koshar's Q. Ordinal data, two independent groups, Wilcox and Grank sum, two paired groups, Wilcox and signed rank, three or more independent groups, Kruskal-Wallis, three or more paired groups, Friedman.